Before the three men will knock on your door, vision will knock on your mind. Before the three men will knock on your door, vision has to knock on your mind. We see something that God takes Peter and he begins to give Peter a new vision in prayer. And this new vision God was giving to him that Peter will need to go outside of the borders of his nation into other nations that Peter wasn't accustomed to. And as God removed the barrier in his mind, something happened. These nations actually started to come to him. He didn't even go there. We understand this principle with God is that God has three men coming to your house. These three men is not Russian, Mexican, and Chinese. These three men is not your brother, your uncle, and your ex. These three men, what I mean by three men is the three, God has blessings on the way to your life. Blessings you haven't experienced, blessings you haven't seen, and God has plans for your life. But for those plans, before they knock on the doors, God goes inside of your mind and begins to mess with it. Because people whose minds God does not stretch, when three men knock, they ignore the knock thinking it's some strangers knocking on my house. Peter first had to have his mind changed because Peter was in the small cave of just reaching out to Jewish people and his mind was limited just with his people while God wanted him to reach out to the nations but he knew Peter will not go to the nations if first Peter's mind does not go to the nations. Before men could knock on the door, God has to knock on your mind. If God is knocking on your mind, that means there is already men on the way. When you're sick and you're praying and God is begins to deal with you and say, you can't have a sick mindset. Meaning, you can't constantly walk around saying, I am sick. You have to say, I am healthy fighting sickness. You can't walk around saying, I'm weak. You have to say, I am strong fighting weakness. You can't walk around and say, I am rejected. Nobody loves you. You have to walk around and say, I am accepted. I am well loved. Happen to fight a rejection right now. What that happens is that your mind fills with the promises of God and then on the bottom of the house there could be knocking. Many people wait for people to knock on your house before you let God knock on your mind. Many of us tell God, Lord God you can knock on my house if you fix my car. The reason why I'm depressed, well I have him and her and them to answer for. You change him, them and them and then I will be very happy. God says I will make you happy and because I make you happy, three of them will knock on the door and make you more happy. First God changes your mind and then he changes the things that happen outside of it, not the other way around. Number two, we see in this scripture that which is on the great sheet is already on the way to you. That which is on the great sheet is already on its way to you. God shows Peter a dream. In this dream, there is a sheet that comes down. There is this blanket that comes down from heaven and this blanket has four corners and the Bible says in this blanket is all kinds of exotic animals. They symbolized nations and continents. And God shows that to Peter. And Peter's looking and says, wow. But Peter did not know these nations were already making way to his house. God was showing him something not that he's going to do. He's already done it. God was telling Peter last night, I already talked to Cornelius, Cornelius already sent the man and I'm just giving you a heads up. This vision I'm showing you, it's not something I'm going to do later. It's something I already have done. It's on its way to your house. Change your mind. Hurry up Peter. Every vision God will give us, it's not something God wants to do. It's something he already has done. 
when someone gets a vision of healing, they're sick. They're filled with doctor's report. They're filled with their symptoms. They're filled with medicine. They're filled with pain. They're filled with sleepless nights. And you begin to pray and God begins to say, well, you have to see yourself that everything is going to be okay. Everything will be okay. You're like, well, God, are you going to do it? God's answer is this. It was 2,000 years ago that my son took that disease. So the answer is no, I am not going to do it. I have done it. When you're defeated by an addiction and you just literally, you, you take two steps forward, three steps backwards and you're praying and you're so defeated, you already know you're going to stop. You're going to quit. You know you're going to stumble into that again and you're praying and you say, God set me free and God says, you got to change your vision. You can't see yourself as a constant loser. But Lord, does that mean that you're going to defeat the devil? No, I am not going to defeat the devil. I have defeated him 2,000 years ago. The vision God gives you is not something he is going to do. It's something he's already done. Peter, this sheet is not something that's gonna happen. It's already has happened and it's on its way to you. When someone is in a curse of poverty, meaning in the blessed country of United States, where you work full time, where all of the opportunities are against you, but you live from hand to mouth. The Bible calls that curse. Doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just simply means you realize there's something holding you back. And you begin to see yourself a blessed person as you pray. You say, God bless me. And God begins to change your image. You say, you cannot see yourself as broke, busted, and disgusted. You got to see yourself as a person that God is going to bless. God is going to provide for your needs. And you say, Lord, does that mean you're going to do that? God says, no. I already have done it. On the cross, my son was accursed that you will receive the blessing of Abraham. Blessing is not stuff, toys and cars and houses. Blessing is God's favor pushes you to have more than enough so you can share with others who don't. Can someone say amen? amen. There was one woman in South Korea who had uh, cancer in her throat and she couldn't speak because of this cancer. She came to her pastor for prayer. The pastor prayed for her and nothing happened. He, she came again. The pastor prayed for her. Nothing happened. She started to bother the pastor and not necessarily because she had cancer, but she always told the pastor after prayer, I know you prayed pastor, but the demon in my throat is so much bigger than God inside of your heart. So this pastor was really upset. And lo and behold, she comes again to him to ask, could you pastor pray for me? And he was so mad at her. So he said, no, I am not going to pray for you. This time I'm going to send you to a prayer mountain and you need to go there. And with a notebook, you need to write this scripture 10,000 times. What it says, by his stripes, we were healed. And after you write one time, you need to get up and speak it loud. By his stripes, we were healed. And after you write that 10,000 times, you come, then I pray for you. So lo and behold, some, a week later, this woman runs into the office, hits through the door. says, pastor, pastor, now you got to pray for me. Brings this notebook, there's 10,000 times of the same verse. He said, I didn't think you would do it. She says, Pastor, I did it. He said, hey, I've noticed. How is your voice doing? He said, yeah, that is true. <clears throat> he said, Pastor, it's doing so much better. He said, what happened? She said, I didn't even realize. When I was writing this by his stripes, I was healed. My voice came back, goes back to the doctor and realizes she has no throat cancer whatsoever. <laughs> See, while she had the vision by saying God's word to herself. She didn't know. Healing is not something God is going to do. He has done it and it was on its way to her. Ready to knock and it entered in. God wants to bring changes in your life. But it first happens by changes happening here. God gives you a vision. God gives you a vision of who you're supposed to be. It looks completely contrary to what you see today. You receive that vision and that vision it's not something God is going to do. It's already done. But it's going to happen in your life. Can somebody say amen? amen? Point number three. Vision is not just something you see. It's also something you have to eat. Vision is not something you see. It's something we have to eat. Meaning it has to become real. See, God presents this vision to 
Peter and says, do you see these exotic animals? This symbolized four corners of the earth. This symbolized nations. This symbolized Asia. This symbolized Latin America. This symbolized Russia. This symbolized India, Africa. This symbolized that. And, and Peter's like, amazing, amazing, impressive. Until God goes a step further. He says, Peter, start eating it. Mm. No. Vegetarian. Don't eat those things. They're really nice to look at, but I'm not sure how they're going to taste. See, many of us love visions, but we don't want to make them a reality inside. We love to think about them when good things happen, but to adopt that image inside, for you to walk with inside, that's when we say, no, 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 no. That is not for me. No, no, I will look at it, but I will not eat it. God wants you to have that image inside of you today. Not when it happens, when he says it. There was a one young man named David. He was a shepherd boy. And the prophet Samuel comes with a jar of oil to anoint the next king of Israel. Finds these big studs who were the brothers of David who were handsome, tough, buff. They worked out a gold's gym. I mean, they had, they had it going for them. And there comes this little corny, this little David. I didn't have his abs. He, I mean, he didn't even have a gym membership. He, he didn't work out a lot. He smelled like sheep. He was so quiet. And the prophet comes on him and he says, this good looking young boy is going to be the next king of Israel. And the prophet pours oil on his head. I want you to notice where he pours oil on head when did David become a king when they put a crown on his head or when they put oil on his head oil at the age of a young man probably 16 15 being probably on his knees receiving oil on his head you know what David or what else David received in his mind I'm a king nobody believed he was a king except a prophet and David. From that day, David's life changed. You know why? There was no crown, but there was a king inside. Where did the king come from? Oil. When God's word paints an image, and instead of saying, no, 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 Lord, this is too hard, this is too difficult, you say, God, this is awesome, scary, and crazy. But God, let it hit my head. Let it come upon my head. You say I'm a king? I'm only 15. People will not, there is a king already. How will this work? But God, I like your idea. Let's make me a king. And after that, I'm going back to the sheep. A kings don't go with the sheep. But God, if you call me a king with the sheep, I'm a king with the sheep. And many of us will say, I'm not a king. If I'm a king, they'll invite me to the palace, not to the sheep. David walks around a king. No crown. But a king is inside and that's what happens when a person becomes healthy and inside but the pain is still in his ankles when the person becomes blessed and inside and their car got possessed repossessed when the person is blessed and inside but their boyfriend just walked away and left them their heart is broken and walking on the side i'm a blessed person i don't have a crown but i got some oil you don't become a king when you get crowned you, get a, you become a king when you get anointed. You don't become who you are when you become that. You become who you are. When God says it, you believe it. And then it takes time for circumstances to catch up.